Hello and welcome to this health supplier segment here on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to have a conversation with Mr. Ashley Palmer, CEO and co-founder of Provention Bio Incorporated. He's joining us here on the program to talk about what the company is doing in developing novel therapeutics aimed at intercepting and preventing immune-mediated disease. Welcome to the program, Ashley. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Neil, and, and a big thank you for this opportunity to tell you and your audience a little about prevention. What is Prevention Bio, and what inspired you to, to start this company? For us, it, it really is all about patient. Um, you know, rather than persist with the industry's conventional approach to mm-hmm. autoimmune disease, which uh, treats symptoms at the end stages of the disease, often after tissue damage has occurred, we set out. Uh, with a focus on preventing autoimmunity in patients who are at risk of diseases resulting from autoimmune response or intercepting their disease in its earliest stages before it's too late. So when we're talking immune-mediated diseases, these are these diseases that um, are weakening the immune system and thereby being able to extensively spread throughout, throughout the body unchecked? Well, there's a, a broad spectrum of immune-mediated disease. At one end is, is cancer. Um, one could argue that the immune system and its surveillance is um, ineffective and allows uh, mutant uh, cells to, to set up and establish um, a, uh, an, an, an oncology-related disease. At the other end of the spectrum, the immune system can be overactive. Um, Often it's associated with uh, a a hypothesis called the hygiene hypothesis, where um, we we believe that modern society is so clean and has uh, avoided uh, opportunities for children and and growing adults to be exposed to pathogens that stimulate their immune system um, and, and have it focus on fighting pathogens. So... Uh, in certain instances and against the right genetic background, the immune system turns against ourselves and uh, begins generating autoantibodies that attack our own tissues. So describe this, uh, this concept that you, that you talk about, uh, disease interception. You, you, know, you say you're, you're taking this different approach as opposed to dealing with the uh, disease in end stage when tissue damage and other damage has taken place. What is this, uh, this interception, intercepting a disease? How does that work? Well, if you take um, the, the, the prototypical autoimmune disease type 1 diabetes, which is the uh, juvenile childhood onset diabetes, not the adult mature diabetes associated with metabolic uh, syndrome, mm-hmm. but these children are... Um, exposed to some trigger that causes an autoimmune response where their own antibodies attack the beta cells in their pancreas, the beta cells being the insulin-producing cells, and destroy those cells so that uh, the, the patient then has to go through a lifetime of supplemental insulin uh, therapy and, and monitoring. Mm-hmm. Uh, we believe uh, in, in one instance that we have identified uh, a trigger for that autoimmune response. Uh, it comes as a result of a, an amazing body of research done over many years, but in particular research done in Finland studying 200,000 children over two decades that identified um, a viral infection, an enterovirus. It, it's called Coxsackie virus B that that infection may be responsible for as much as 50% of the autoimmunity that results in type 1 diabetes. And so now, once we've identified this trigger, we can set about therapeutic approaches to uh, not treating the diabetes after the infection and the tissue damage has been done, but preventing the infection in high-risk patients and therefore preventing them from ever developing Uh, type 1 diabetes, or at least postponing it for a considerable period of time. Why do you think that other companies haven't uh, jumped on board and identified some of these, uh, this this trigger, as you say, before you? Well, I I think they have in the past, to be very honest with you. um, This is no different than vaccinating children against an infectious disease like uh, measles or mumps or 
um, against uh, polio uh, that causes the, the paralytic poliomyelitis. And most recently, we've seen developments where companies have developed a vaccine against human papillomavirus that is associated with cervical cancer. I think that what prevention has done differently, though, is look at autoimmunity, look at, look at diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, type 1 diabetes, uh, lupus, and come at it from the identifying the trigger or identifying upstream targets that can intercept the progression of the, of the disease at an earlier stage, where as um, historically, the, the, the industry has tended to focus on treating the symptoms and managing the inflammation associated with the end stages of the disease. Now, we've, we've talked a bit about type 1 diabetes, uh, the juvenile type of diabetes, and how prevention is involved. Type 1 diabetes isn't the only disease that you are currently developing treatments for. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, yes, we licensed in two um, uh, therapeutics from Janssen in the, in the field of inflammatory bowel disease, one for Crohn's and one for ulcerative colitis. Um, Janssen uh, began developing these assets uh, at um, more uh, typical diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and so on, and from our perspective did a great job of showing that these molecules were hitting their target and were well tolerated in patients. The, um, the big companies tend to focus on the bigger indications, and w when um, uh, my co-founder, Francisco Leon, who was uh, the head of early development and uh, immunology uh, in, 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 in Janssen's immunology division, was working on these programs, I think uh, he, he realized that uh, the gene signatures and the biomarkers that were uh, being studied by uh, Janssen, um, identifying that these uh, molecules were hitting targets in diseases like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, that there was an opportunity to focus uh, their development on, on these diseases. And we were very um, grateful and, and uh, humbled to be allowed by Janssen to license them in and develop them uh, for these very debilitating diseases that still have a high unmet need. Well, we'd like to learn some more about your company and also about intercepting and preventing immune-mediated disease. Well, thank you, uh, Neil. Uh, we, we would love um, your audience to take a look at our website, which is www.preventionbio.com. And I think uh, if, if they just, um, you know, search the web uh, for uh, the hygiene hypothesis, autoimmunity, and so on, um, it, it is becoming a, a very popular subject now, um, recognizing that these debilitating diseases have a trigger and we can go upstream from where current therapy and current treatment is focused and, and attempt to do research and development to prevent or intercept the diseases before they become uh, established and cause significant tissue damage. Ashley, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in and speaking with us today. Oh, Neil, thank you very much indeed. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mr. Ashley Palmer, CEO and co-founder of Prevention Bio Incorporated. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud. And be sure and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says Become a Patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the Become a Patron button, and support us if you can.